an essential disadvantage which the cessation of the metaphysical outlook brings with it lies in the fact that the attention of the individual is too firmly fixed on his own brief span of life and receives no stronger impulse to work at the construction of enduring institutions intended to last for centuries. He wants to pluck the fruit himself from the tree he plants, and he is therefore no longer interested in planting those trees which demand constant tending for a century, and are intended to provide shade for long successions of generations. For the metaphysical outlook bestows the belief that it offers the last, ultimate foundation, upon which the whole future of mankind is then invited to establish and construct itself. The individual is promoting his salvation when, for example, he founds a church or a convent. He thinks it will be accounted to his credit and rewarded in the eternal future life of his soul. It is a contribution to the eternal salvation of the soul. Can science, too, awaken such faith in its conclusions? The fact is that science needs doubt and distrust for its closest allies. Nonetheless, the sum of unimpeachable truths, truths, that is, which have survived all the assaults of skepticism and disintegration, can in time become so great, in the dietetics of health, for example, that on the basis of them one may resolve to embark on everlasting works. In the meanwhile, the contrast between our agitated ephemeral existence and the slow breathing repose of metaphysical ages is still too strong, because the two ages are still too close together. The individual human being himself now runs through far too many inner and outer evolutions for him to venture to establish himself securely and once and for all, even for so short a span as his own lifetime. A completely modern man who wants, for example, to build himself a house, has at the same time the feeling he is proposing to immure himself alive in a mausoleum.